In this video, we're going to learn and discuss how to create air bars using Microsoft Excel. Uh, in previous videos, I've talked about how to create an XY scatter plot graph, which is what we see right here. And in previous videos, I've talked about how to calculate standard deviation, uh, the mean, then standard deviation, standard error of the mean, and a 95% confidence interval. And we're going to use that 95% confidence interval as a way to show um, our degree of error or uncertainty in our calculations of these mean values. And so in this particular situation, this mock data, we're looking at the percent change in mass uh, due to some different solutions. We have some different molarity solutions ranging from 0 to 1. We've done a number of trials for this experiment, and then I have some mean uh, percent change, whether it's positive or negative, in the values. And so I have already set up a graph for this um, that, that shows this. I have molarity on the x-axis, I have percent change on the y-axis, you can see there's some negative values here, and I have these data points plotted. What I want to do now is actually add some error bars to, to these data points. So I'm going to click on the points here, and you can see how they are now all highlighted. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, if I click on them again, I'm going to right-click on the data point, and you will see that there's an option to format the data series. Another way that you can get to this option is depending on your version of Excel um, you can click on chart layout so under charts chart layout and you'll see there is an option here for error bars. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and go to format data series and you'll see right here there's a number of different options of things I can change and right now it's selected on the error bars. We're not going to use X, that would be the X axis air bars. We're going to use Y axis or vertical air bars. And I'm going to click on both because we want to display both a positive and a negative. And I prefer to put a cap or a line on mine to show a cap. And so right now you can see that it's giving a fixed value um, for our air bars. You can change that to percentage, you can change that to a standard deviation. We're going to do a custom. And I'm going to click custom and then I'm going to click on specify value. And this is going to allow me to uh, select the positive error value and the negative error value. We've actually already calculated this. I'm going to delete what is in both of these. And then I'm going to click this button, and this will allow me to select what values I want to choose to have be my error value. And this is going to be what we've calculated for the 95% confidence uh, interval. And we're going to use the this, this same values for both the positive and the negative. So I'll go ahead and click this and it will allow me to click and highlight the data that I want to use. So I'm going to highlight all of this and press enter. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the negative value. I'm going to click this icon so that I can select. And I'm going to click enter again. And then I'm going to press OK. And so see now I can come back and I can change any of these settings that I want. But if I press OK again, you can see that it's already added the error bars to my different data points, and you can see, especially this last one, uh, the data point for uh, molarity of 1.0. It has, and this actually fits with our data, our confidence interval is 0 0.189, and that is the largest out of all of these different samples. And so what this tells us and what this shows us is we would expect the average for this value for a 1.0 molar solution, we would expect the average percent change to fall somewhere in between these two data points. And so this helps to show us how reliable or how much we can actually, um, how much faith we can put in these values. And, and so 95 out of 100 times, because we've calculated the 95% confidence interval, we would expect the true mean or the true average that we've calculated for one point molar to fall within this range. And so this is a pretty big variation, and so this was probably not uh, very reliable. Whereas some of these other ones with smaller bars here indicate a smaller range, and so our true average uh, is going to fall somewhere within this range. And so that's how we add error bars. Again, we want to use a 95% confidence interval um, in order to be able to help depict where the true average, what range the true average would be in. 